Namaste. So now I want to talk about the most esoteric of esoteric things, the most secret of secrets, and the ultimate realization of spiritual life. And that is the end of the path. A path is a way to go from one place to another. It has a beginning, a middle, and an end. In other words, it exists in time and space. And because of this, it is a product of duality. In duality, when one is here, one is not there. <laughs> and the reverse. So, on the path, one is at a certain point of progress and endeavoring to make further progress. But when a being is able to resolve the duality into non-duality, everything changes. then there's no more beginning, middle, end. There's no more here and there. No more thou and I. No more now and then. No more things. No more time, space, etc. And so this is similar to the Zen uh, statement that there is no path, there is no teaching, there is no Buddha. And if you meet Buddha on the path, kill him because he's going to cheat you. What does this mean? It means, as we have often asserted here, that spiritual teachings are an artifice. They are something temporary. Just like when constructing a big building, they put scaffolding, huh? and then they build the building. And when the building is done, they remove the scaffolding. In the same way, when one is advancing on the spiritual path, there is a structure, there is a collection of meanings, uh, metaphors, symbols, structures of intention, and so on. Many mental structures, many terms, many uh, functions, to use a mathematical term, and processes of change. But when one reaches the end of the path, when one actually gets the result, all this drops away. Just like when the scaffolding is removed, when the building is complete. So, I have been coming to this point over the last year especially, but specifically when I was in Jagannath Puri not long ago, where it's like the veil was removed and I just saw things as they are. And I realized, wait a minute, I have always been this. I always am this. And this, Brahman, has no boundaries, has no limitations. See, as soon as you have an identity, it means a limitation. If I'm male, I'm not female. If I'm white, I'm not black and so on. 
So as soon as we create an ego, that means an identity, who I am. And of course, Ramana Maharshi's famous uh, process of who am I, inquiring into who am I, can only have one possible conclusion. And that is, at the end of the path, I don't know who I am. I can't know who I am. Because if you analyze ontologically, as soon as you have a, a who, an I, huh, you have an identity, you have a limitation. And one who has reached enlightenment at the end of the path is beyond all that. So I can't say who I am. I can't even conceive who I am, because I can't see who I am. Like Ramana used to quote, you cannot see Brahman or the self. You can only be the self. And because there's only one self, <laughs> it's not two, huh? so that one can observe the other one, then you can't know who you are, because you can't observe yourself. You don't have an identity. So this is, you know, beyond most people's, well, almost all people's experience. And scriptures don't discuss it either very well. Like I mentioned in Zen, they talk about this in forms of an aphorism or koan. And it's the same in other religions. There are so many metaphors. I've explained everything here many, many times. But there's a difference between explanation and even knowing about something in words and then actually experiencing. When you experience the end of the path, it's devastating. it precipitates existential crisis. Because who am I? I don't know. I can't limit myself. Well, I'm sure there are plenty of people who would uh, do that for me. <laughs> yeah, you're this, you're that, you're this, and blah, blah, blah. No. Only I can know who I am. Because other, per other people are also identities and they're also limited and duality and all that stuff. So they can't see. And I can't see because I am one. So if I have this idea, I am a man, I am an American, I am this, I am that, and all that, then that's not the end of the path. That's somewhere in the middle. And of course, all the different religious and spiritual teachers and teachings will deny that you can be at the end of the path. Maybe the guru, uh, maybe the great Swami, what's his, whatever, can be enlightened. But you, no, you're on the path. You have to follow our instructions. <laughs> So it just becomes a control game. It becomes like a business or like politics. That's not spiritual life. Spiritual life is completely internal, completely virtual. Read Shankaracharya. Read his purports and his comments and his interpretation of the great scriptures, especially Vedanta. And you'll see, he doesn't attempt to define, just like the Buddha. Buddha never attempted to define Nibbana or Nirvana 
except in negative terms. And similarly, Shankara describes enlightenment, or moksha, as not this, not that, neti neti. Actually, that's in Upanishads. So, when we reach the end of the path, now there's no more place to go, no more somebody to be or become, no more sadhana, no more knowledge, scriptures, yoga, meditation. (laughs) I mean, we can do these things, but it's not part of a progressive movement on a path. Just like when someone is enlightened, that doesn't mean they stop eating or sleeping or breathing (laughs) or other things. They still engage in all kinds of activities, but that's only external. That's only for the maintenance of the body because our view is the body is not me. The body is not mine, because there's no I to possess it. But it's made by nature, it's made by God or goddess. So it's my duty to maintain it nicely, that's all. So we maintain the body according to its needs. The end of the path means nothing to do nowhere to go, no one to be, nothing to desire, nothing to possess or own, and so on. So when we reach the end of the path, that means all that is finished. And where do we go from here? What do we do now? Planning seems like a ridiculous notion. (laughs) So we take life day by day or moment to moment. And uh, remain cool. Just do what is necessary to maintain the body. And as, again, uh, Ramana quoted, and then wait and see what kind of strange things are going to happen. Because everything that happens is strange. It's divorced from Brahman. It's duality. So, (laughs) you see, it's very hard to talk about because all the terms that we use in conjunction with spiritual life really have no applicability into state at the end of the path. So this is the ultimate stage of spiritual life where all questions are answered, all doubts are cleared, everything that can be known is known, and everything that cannot be known, can never be known, because one has become consciousness itself, and that is the aim of the spiritual path. Aum Tatsa, Aum Shakti, Aum.